Welcome to the Maths Made Easy tutorial on iterative methods. This is the second video on the topic and here we're going to go through the use of iteration machines. So uh, an iteration machine is just a formula that you can plug values in and it will bring you closer and closer to the actual value of the unknown that you're trying to work out. So in this example we've got to use the iterative formula to find the value of x to one decimal place. So we plug in values of x and it's just going to keep refining that value to, until we get closer and closer to the actual solution. And we're going to start with x1 is equal to 1. So the formula is xn plus 1, which means the next value of x is equal to 4 minus xn. xn is the current value of x. And we're cubing that value and we're dividing the whole thing by 6. So what I'm going to do here is just do everything on the calculator. Uh, and we're using x1 to begin with. Uh, so as you can see here, I've stored 1 in the calculator already. So you press 1 and then press equals. Uh, then what the calculator does is it stores this value. Anything that you, uh, if you press equals on a calculator, uh, the calculator will store the value. You can access that through the answer key. So as you can see, answer is equal to one. Now what I'm gonna do is plug in the first value, x1, uh, which is equal to one. I'm gonna plug that value in uh, to our formula. So I'm gonna type out the formula, we've got four minus, but I'm gonna use the answer key here and it'll become clear in a second why I'm doing that. So we've got answer cubed and we're dividing that by six. Uh, so if I press equals here, uh, we've got a value of a half. So x2 is equal to a half. Uh, but then all I have to do now is just keep pressing equals because the formula is stored uh, and the answer that is stored is 0 0.5 here. So if I press equals now, it's around the same calculation but this time with a value of 0 0.5 and we've got a value now of x3 equals 0 0.6458. Six, uh, 5 for short, so 0 0.6458 just rounds to 0 0.65. We're only looking here for a solution that uh, is to one decimal place. So we just have to keep pressing this equals key until our value to one decimal place doesn't change. So if I press this quite a few times, uh, as you can see, uh, the solution has converged towards x is equal to 0 0.6. So our answer to one decimal place is x equals 0 0.6. So there's another skill regarding the use of iteration formulas or iteration machines, and that's to actually create the machine itself. So in this example, we've got to show that x cubed plus x squared equals seven can be rearranged to give xn plus one is equal to the cube root of seven minus xn squared. So all that's happened here is we've rearranged the equation to make x the subject. Now there's two ways we can do that. We can either rearrange to make the x cubed subject. Uh, so take the x value from the x cubed term and make that the subject or we can take the value of x from the x squared term and make that the subject. But on the right hand side, we've got this cube root here. So what we've done is we've taken this x cubed term and make the x from that the subject of the equation. So let's just run through it. So we've got x cubed plus x squared is equal to seven. Now, as we're trying to isolate this x cubed term, first of all, we're gonna subtract x squared from both sides. So we get x squared equals seven, sorry, x cubed equals seven minus x squared, and the final thing we do is we cube root both sides of the equation. So we get x equals the cube root of seven minus x squared, and this is now in the same form as the expression we're told to make. So all I've done here is change this, so we've got xn plus one equals the cube root of seven minus xn squared, and as you can see, this is the same exact form as the one we're trying to make. It can take a bit of practice to get good at this topic, so why not have a go at our online exam? This is available through our revision platform, and if you take the test, you'll find loads of different questions to have a go at, all of which you'll receive instant feedback on. So it's a really good way of keeping track of your progress and finding out where you're going wrong, uh, so you can improve in time for your actual exam. So if you're interested, you can click the link below and it will take you straight there.